of the unvaccinated. We are seeing an outbreak of the unvaccinated. I want to be crystal clear about what's happening in the country today. We have a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Okay, the echo chamber. But is that true? The Biden administration has been citing data that 99% of COVID deaths and 95% of hospitalizations are among the unvaccinated. Well, it turns out that statistic is grossly misleading, something the CDC director inadvertently admitted today. Those data were data that um, were from analyses in several states from uh, January through June and didn't reflect the data that we have now from the Delta variant. We are actively working to update those in the context of the Delta variant. Oh, really? Well, a vast majority of this country was unvaccinated, Rochelle, for the first four months of the year. Thus, the numbers would obviously skew toward those dying and hospitalized being in that category. So why is the CDC skewing the data? Joining us now is Dr. Byron Bridal, Associate Professor of Viral Immunology at the University of Guelph, who has been researching the COVID vaccine. Doctor, thank you for joining us in part two of this interview with you. Is it accurate to now call this a pandemic of the unvaccinated? Or do you think those who are vaccinated could also be contributing to the emergence of these new variants? Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely, it's untrue uh, to be calling this a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Uh, in fact, I would argue that, and it's certainly untrue, uh, the, this flipping of the messaging to to scare people into thinking that the unvaccinated are somehow driving the emergence of novel variants. This goes against every scientific principle that we understand. Uh, the reality is the nature of the vaccines that we are using right now and the way we are rolling them out are going to be applying the selective pressure to this virus to promote the emergence of new variants. Again, this is based on sound principles. We have to look no further than chemotherapy for cancers and the emergence of antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. The principles are this. If you have a biological entity that's prone to mutation and the SARS coronavirus too, like all coronaviruses is prone to mutation. So if you have a biological entity like that, and you apply a narrowly focused selective pressure that is non-lethal, and you do this over a long period of time, this is the recipe for driving the emergence of novel variants. And that's exactly what we're doing. Our vaccines are focused on a single protein of the virus. So the virus only has to alter one protein. And the vaccines do, don't come close to conferring sterilizing immunity. Um, people who are vaccinated, still get infected. It only seems to be particularly good at blunting the disease. And so what that tells you, therefore, is, the, is that these vaccines in the vast majority of people are applying a non-lethal pressure, narrowly focused on one protein. And of course, the vaccine rollout is occurring over a long period of time. That's the recipe for driving So that's driving variants. the variants. And so it's exact, Absolutely. your theory is that it's the exact opposite of what they're saying, because they're trying to demonize and intimidate those who have chosen not to be vaccinated for whatever reason. So they're to blame. They should be shunned. They should be punished, denied services. and so it, It's right. ridiculous. If, if anything, the unvaccinated uh, are likely acquiring, probably in pretty substantial numbers, naturally acquired immunity, which I would argue from an immunological perspective is going to be much more protective than the vaccine-induced immunity against novel variants. So, again, something the administration refuses to address head on or accept the idea that you have B or T cell memory immunity to this ongoing virus and that you would not then need a vaccine, correct? Yeah, it's shocking to me as an immunologist because basically, yes, you are correct. Essentially, our immune systems actually work. Uh, they do respond to pathogens, and they do protect us from pathogens. And there are published papers. Uh, people can look up a paper done by, by authors Seti and Karate uh, that was published in, in a Nature Journal. And it, it shows very clearly, as do uh, several very good peer-reviewed publications, they show very clearly that naturally acquired immunity against SARS coronavirus 2 is very potent. It's very long-lasting. And importantly, in the context of novel variants, it's very broad in, in its uh, scope. So it's going to be very balanced. We're going to have uh, lots of antibodies and T cells. And the thing is, it targets multiple components of the virus. And this not is very just important the one protein. Based on what not I just, just said. Yeah, not exactly. just the one protein. And exactly. That's why so that's we just should, it. So, yeah, variants, so it. variants will occur. 
Yeah, exactly. So variants will occur that are going to be able to bypass the vaccine-induced immunity, but those viruses aren't going to be changing all the other components that people who have naturally responded are protected against. Dr. Bridal, thank you. This is uh, it's stunning how this is being uh, sold to the American public and demonizing the people who've chosen not to be vaccinated.